Hey, David Brewster here with an episode of Chord Play, and this is the Chords of Brian Adams. And I did feature uh, guitarist Keith Scott, who's worked with Brian Adams since 1983-ish. I did feature him in a three-for-all last year, and I had a lot of requests to feature, you know, the chords of Brian Adams. And Brian Adams actually does play guitar, and he plays rhythm behind Keith. And Keith's a very tasteful, you know, guitarist, and I really do like the way that they've orchestrated their parts, you know, over the years. And Brian Adams definitely just erupted on the scene somewhere around 1983, right around the same time he started working with Keith on uh, Cuts Like a Knife, and that album kind of opened the door. And then the following year, he released Reckless, you know, which was just a worldwide, you know, sensation. It was, it just erupted. And they played videos on MTV, they played, they still played, you know, a lot of music on the radio. They had a lot of coverage of magazines and things like that. And they've just toured the world, you know, technically since 1983, which is awesome. There's something about those early albums, Cuts Like a Knife and Reckless, and Into the Fire is good too, which followed Reckless, but it's, you know, a little raw, uh, a little bluesier, and kind of different, but uh, Cuts Like a Knife and Reckless are great, and really that album right there on the wall, I mean, that really is kind of like, you know, part of the soundtrack of the 80s, that's a very important, you know, 80s album, right along with Thriller in 1984 and a whole bunch of other albums too, Purple Rain, of course. But Reckless, I mean, it's dynamite, so if you've never really heard that album or if it's been a while, put it on and listen to it. I mean, it's just a great, you know, kind of, you know, rock guitar record or whatever. It's definitely, you know, very driven by rock guitar, and I really prefer that era of Brian Adams, you know, career. And then after that, you know, he definitely had some big hits that were more like love songs and ballads. You know, he had like the Robin Hood soundtrack and all that, and that's good music. It's just, I mean, truth be told, I'm not a really, you know, a big love song or ballad kind of person. I never listen to music like that. You'll never ever find me, like, sitting in my car, you know, listening to Michael Bolton or something. I mean, that will never happen. So there's nothing wrong with that music. I just don't really listen to it or, or prefer, you know, I, I kind of like more, you know, rockin' and funk and blues and metal and all this kind of stuff. And uh, ballads and love songs aren't really my thing, but I do respect Brian Adams big time. I think he's a great songwriter, he's got a great voice, and that classic music is so good. You know, it's like, man, how can you not like that? You know, it's great. The opening, that was Cuts Like a Knife, you know, Brian's breakout single, for sure. And this is a great example of what I was talking about, where, you know, Brian and Keith kind of weave their guitar parts together. And there's multiple, you know, guitars during the intro. And in the background, uh, there's actually, you know, just some simple chords being played, like a D power chord, a G power chord, and like a C sus2 or, you know, C add 9 right there. And they're just partial chords. You know, very basic. So that's kind of the foundation, you know, the chord progression. And then um, I'm using a TC Electronic Ditto Looper to kind of, you know, capture that. So there's the looped guitar part. And then the other guitar is doing the melodic, you know, kind of droned open string idea. And you can find a lot of guitarists, you know, playing with this. Um, think of songs by Collective Soul and Tool and ACDC. There's a whole bunch of stuff that has, you know, fretted notes played against open, you know, droned open strings. And that's what's happening here. There's a melody right there, right? You know, we're moving from that E, F sharp back to E. And it all just takes place on the, the G string. But then you're also letting the open D string ring against, you know, those fretted notes or single notes. Like that. And it's interesting how those two guitar parts come together. You know, you've got the basic chords. And then the kind of fretted, you know, melodic, droned uh, open string idea, too. And they blur together perfectly. So with the looper, it sounds like this. kind of walks into that C sus2 and then it starts the verse you know 
a classic song, and I love that guitar part. It's very simple, but very effective and very catchy. And I like the way, you know, once again, those guitar parts kind of work together. You've got the chords working against the melodic part, but it fits and it sounds great. Up next is Kids Wanna Rock from Reckless, and I've always liked this song. It has this aggressive, kind of cocky attitude, and uh, the guitar part's kind of, you know, like a rock blues, kind of traditional, you know, sounding idea, but it's really cool. You know, something like this. <laughs> basic but uh, you know a lot of Brian's music you'll find the guitar parts are usually pretty simple you know simple ideas but very catchy you know they grab your attention whether it's on the radio or it's you know on an album you're listening to or whatever you know it just grabs your attention and uh, this is interesting it's kind of based around E7 loosely and we're basically hitting the, the high E and the B open together and then grabbing the single D and the single B open D and open G, kind of an implied G chord, there's an implied A right there, just a partial A with uh, the second fret on the D and the G, and then just start, you know, banging on this E power chord. It kind of loosely reminds me of ACDC, just a little bit. It has a little bit of Malcolm Young attitude in there. You know, it really does. Like, if you slowed it down or kind of beefed it out, it probably would sound a little bit like ACDC. Next is It's Only Love, and I did feature this in I Love 80s Chords, like a, you know, a previous chord play episode, but I'm doing Brian Adams, so I had to feature this again. Great song, and I do remember a time when they played this on MTV. They played It's Only Love and Run To You like 50 times a day, every day. They played it all the time. And of course, Tina Turner, you know, featured a guest vocalist on this song. Great tune, and I've always loved this guitar part too. You know, it's kind of different. It's got this kind of uh, edge to it. I don't really know how to explain it, but a cool song, something like this. We're starting with this D power chord, and then back to that C sus2, or you know, add nine, however you want to think of that. And it's just a partial chord, you know, the third fret on the A, third fret on the B, and the open G. So you're kind of muting that D string. And then an A sus4 right there. And it's a really cool twist on the chords, I like that. basically hit a B flat and then he does this kind of bluesy slide and then an F you know full bar chord guitar part and how can you not turn that up you know and just blast it or start rocking it you know great song but next is the song long gone which is also from reckless and we're kind of stuck in reckless mode i mean that's such a great album just filled with great songs and great guitar parts but long gone has this kind of funky bouncy kind of feel to it something like this <laughs> simple but we're bouncing from the C and we're kind of moving to this F you know kind of 70s inversion right there you know, it's technically an F chord but we're using that C and then kind of bouncing into that F or partial F like 
like that. And you're kind of basically hitting that chord and hammering on those you know, two extensions or the two additional notes. That kind of gives it that bouncy kind of funky groove. And then just move back to a partial B flat right there. And then a partial G right here. And there's kind of a pause and then you do it again. And that's really what the guitar is doing, but I typically, when I'm playing it by myself, I almost always kind of scratch and sniff and kind of funk it up a little bit just to fill out that rhythm. Last example is the very famous Run To You. I think this is probably my favorite you know, Brian Adams song. Such a great tune. And when I first tried to learn this when I was a teenager, I didn't realize he's actually using the capo on the second fret. And I tried to bar, you know, and fret everything, and I didn't realize there was a capo involved. So without the capo, um, it is actually a lot trickier to play. With the capo, it's very simple. You know, something like this. <laughs> basic so it's basically you know I mean we're technically playing F sharp 7 right there because of the capo but I'm just thinking of it you know in reference to the capo that's kind of like an E7 even though like I said technically with the capo it's actually F sharp 7 and then right there you're gonna move to this kind of partial G form even though that's really part of an A now because of the capo but that partial G right there and then move that up basically a whole step change that to an A at 11, but technically it's a B at 11 because of the capo. But I'm um, once again just kind of referring, you know, in reference to the capo, which is what, you know, typically they do in books and, and lessons and stuff. But uh, there you can see just a three chord progression. You know, very basic, but it immediately catches your attention. It has that dreamlike quality, you know, when you hear that song and when you push play or it comes on, it just grabs you, you know, you're like, okay, and then you hear the guitar, you know, or whatever. Kind of hard to bend with the capo on there, but I, I did the best I could. But, uh, you know, very instantly recognizable guitar part, but so simple. I mean, you know, a child could play that. One more example from the same song, this is the interlude or guitar solo from Run To You, and this is probably one of the easiest guitar solos or guitar interludes ever but it fits the song perfectly. You know, and if Keith would have pulled out some ripping guitar solo, it might have actually taken away from the song because this actually fits the mood and flow of Run To You perfectly. So if you're recording some music or writing some songs, remember that, like try to find parts that really add to what you've already, you know, written or played. Because, uh, yeah, cool guitar solo or some wicked licks, you know, would impress guitarists. But for the average listener, or for the sake of the song, it might actually hurt the song or take away from the tune. But this interlude is so simple, just based around sus4 and major, you know, partial chords like this. right there so we're basically hitting like a partial F sharp and we're also grabbing you know the sus4 for that F sharp right there that B note and then do the exact same thing down a whole step now it's a partial E and we're grabbing that A right there for the sus4 and then a partial D and we're grabbing that G right there you know, very very simple but you have to remember, you know, there's a lot of guitarists that play solos based around some of those chord forms. And David Gilmore from Pink Floyd's one. But there's a ton of players that do stuff like that. Larry Carlton and Steve Vai have caught, you know, a bunch of players, you know, using partial chords and, you know, arpeggio uh, fragments and using it for a melodic, you know, statement or a part of a, you know, phrase in a solo or something like that. 
And this is pretty simple, you know, as far as that type of idea. But that's all that song needed were just those simple little, you know, kind of cascading, you know, melodic parts of those chords. And, you know, it was perfect. I'm just going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the chords of Brian Adams. And there's definitely something magical about those 80s albums. And definitely, you know, there's some interesting music that he put out in the 90s and, and, and you know, beyond. But there's something about that classic era. You could tell he had this kind of passion or this energy. And you can hear it and feel it in the music where it's like, man, he means this music. It's not just some fluff that he was trying to, you know, make a hit song or a hit record. It's like, no, he put a lot of heart behind that, uh, you know, those first few albums. And I'm sure he put his heart into every album. But uh, I don't know what it is. It's probably just my childhood mixed with MTV and, you know, early days of playing guitar. But when I hear something from Reckless, you know, I want to turn it up. I want to listen to it where it's like, man, I remember this song. Summer of 69 and all those songs. Not really a big fan of Heaven, which was one, like one of the ballads, but that's still a great song, just not really you know, one of my favorites. But there's a lot you can learn from kind of going back and noticing things that people like Brian Adams or maybe The Who or The Beatles or Hendrix or you know Jimmy Page or whoever. It's really beneficial to go back and notice like, you know, what they did with chords, what they did with single note riffs and, you know, solos and fills and licks and all kinds of stuff. Just weird noises and feedback and slide or, you know, whatever, capo. You know, like we had with Run To You, um, that kind of capo sneaking in there. There's all kinds of stuff like this, just little things you can kind of pick up and it may influence your own music, you know, in the future. So anyway, I'm just gonna keep laughing if I don't stop this video. So. Uh, Anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Lunette Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.